everybody. Welcome to another video. Hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. In this video, we're going to solve some trigonometric equations. So equations that look like this, we're going to solve for theta, and we're usually instructed to do one of two things. Either one, we solve in the interval from 0 to 2 pi, or two, we write a general formula for all solutions for an equation like this, okay? So when we're solving on an interval from 0 to 2 pi, those are just the values that we see on the unit circle, right? It's from 0 to 2 pi. So we're going to have basically a solution set that is finite. We could potentially, I guess, have no solution. Uh, we could have 1, 2, 3. It's going to be a finite number of solutions, right? But when we write a general formula for all solutions, we're no longer restricted to any kind of interval. And if you remember what a coterminal angle is, basically, if I have sine of theta equals root 3 over 2, something like that, for example. Well, pi over 3 makes that a true statement, but I could add or subtract any multiple of pi over 3 and plug that in, and it is still a true statement, right? That's what a coterminal angle means. So really, for a lot of these equations, if I don't restrict the interval from 0 to 2 pi, there are infinitely many solutions, right? And that's what we do when we write a general formula, is we list out a general formula for all of those solutions. So I'm going to go ahead and do both these for this first example. But for the rest of the video, I'm just going to do this first option, because that's what's most commonly asked, is solve on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So for the rest of the examples, I'll do that. But for this example, I will show both of these so we can see how they both work. So number one, solving the interval from 0 to 2 pi. So the first thing I like to do is just isolate the trig piece of this equation. So I'm trying to get sine theta equals something, basically. And I can do that using just some pretty simple algebra. Let's see, I have 2 sine theta minus 1 equals 0. So what if I add 1 to both sides, right? Then I draw an arrow. That means this becomes sine theta equals 1. Now what if I divide both sides by 2, right? Because what I have here is 2 times sine theta equals 1. So if I divide both sides by 2, then I get rid of that 2, and I'm just left with sine theta equals 1 half sine theta equals one half. So I'm, now I'm looking for the values for theta between zero and two pi that make this true, right? What can I plug in for theta between zero and two pi to get one half? Well, that is pi over six, that is one solution. So I usually write my solution like this. I write theta equals, and since I know I'm gonna have more than one solution, I usually write a little curly brace, okay? And then I'm gonna write pi over six, and then what's my other solution? Let's think about the unit circle on positive with the reference angle of pi over 6. That's going to give me pi over 6 and 5 pi over 6. 5 pi over 6. And I basically just knew pi over 6 was my reference angle, so I thought about being pi over 6 away from basically the x-axis, right? I thought of my unit circles. That's how I got both those solutions. So this, these are the solutions from 0 to 2 pi. So if we were doing part 1, this would be a good solution. Now if we're doing part two, I'll draw a little line here. How do we write a general formula for all the solutions, okay? So to write a general formula, let's think about this. We have theta equals pi over six. We have theta equals five pi over six. And again, like I talked about earlier, I can add or subtract any multiple of pi over six to either of these angles. And when I plug it in, it still makes this a true statement. So those are all solutions if we're going to write a general form for all the solutions, I have to include all of those numbers. How can I do that? Well, I can write theta equals pi over 6, and I can write theta equals 5 pi over 6. And now, again, I can add or subtract any multiple of 2 pi from either of these, right? So let's think about doing this, plus 2 pi times k right, where k is any integer, so positive or negative. So if it's negative, I'm subtracting a multiple of 2 pi. If it's positive, I'm adding a multiple of 2 pi, and that will still be a solution, okay? And I can do the same thing with this data down here, 5 pi over 6, where I add 2 pi k. And if you've ever seen this notation, you could write something like, you know, such that k is an integer. k basically belongs to the set of integers, Right, so you can use this notation, or you could just write out such that k is an integer, or make a little note k. It depends how uh, picky your professor is, but something like this with this would be fine if you just wrote k is an integer. I would personally accept either of those, but yeah, this is a good general form for all solutions. But again, for the rest of the video, I'm going to do stuff like this, and we're going to solve it from 0 to 2 pi. So let's go ahead and do some more examples. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and work out both these examples. I'm solving on the interval from 0 to 2 pi. And for these, I encourage you to pause the video, try them on your own, and press play to check your answer. So 
By now I'm assuming you're done and you're checking your answer. Let's go ahead and start. So again, my strategy is always just isolate the trig. Okay, so I'm trying to get cosine theta by itself and I can just simply just divide both sides by two and I get exactly what I want. So if I divide by two here and divide by two here, then I'm left with cosine theta equals negative root three over two. And this is something that looks pretty familiar, right? And you'll always be left with something that you're able to find without using a calculator because we're doing all these examples with no calculator. So it'll always be something that looks familiar from the unit circle or you'll be able to use some kind of identity to get it without using a calculator. So if you don't get that, then maybe double check your steps and make sure you did everything right. So what value for theta gives me negative root three over two for cosine? Let's think about this. Well, I have a reference angle of pi over six for this value. And since it's negative, it's gonna be in the second and third quadrant, okay? So I'm here in quadrant two and quadrant three, and this angle between the terminal side and the x-axis is pi over six. So that's gonna leave me with five pi over six and seven pi over six. So for this example, theta equals five pi over six and seven pi over six. And hopefully y'all understand how I'm doing that with the reference angles. If you don't have some videos, make sure to check those out on reference angles and how I'm able to do that without actually memorizing the unit circle. So, all right, let's go ahead and move on. Five secant theta minus three equals two. So again, always the same strategy. Isolate the trig. So I'm trying to get secant theta equals something. So if I add three to both sides, then what do I get? I get five secant theta equals, let's see, that's gone. Two plus three, that's five. Oh, I see what's gonna happen here. I can divide both sides by five and I'm left with secant theta equals one. Secant theta equals one. So some people may be able to just look at this and know what it is. Some people it helps to rewrite it. You can rewrite it as this is like saying one over cosine theta equals one, right? Which means that what? Cosine has to be one for this to be true, right? So maybe that helps you out a little bit because cosine of one, people are more likely to be like, oh, I know what that is versus secant. I don't know, for some reason we like sine and cosine is what I'm trying to say. So if it helps to rewrite it like that, then do it. So. When is cosine theta equal to one? Let's think about this. I can always still draw my little uh, axes here. Cosine theta is equal to one. Let's see, that should be at zero and two pi. But again, notice that this is equal to and this is just less than. So I'm not writing both zero and two pi as solutions. I'm just including the zero because of my interval. So do pay attention to that. So my solution for this is just it's actually just zero because if I take pi in this case, then I'll be at negative one. And if I take pi over two or three pi over two, I'm at zero. So we actually just have one solution at this case and it is theta equals zero. All right, let's finish up the video with these last two examples. And these may look pretty straightforward, but these kind of problems in particular are where I see students make a lot of silly mistakes. So let's go and walk through them and make sure everyone is crystal clear on how to solve both of these. So again, we're solving on the interval from zero to two pi. Here I have tangent squared theta equals one third. My strategy is to isolate the trig, but really what I want is tangent theta equals something. So this squared is kind of messing me up. And I would like to make a note off here on the side of what tangent squared theta even actually means. It is really just tangent theta, the whole thing times itself, right? And the reason we write it like this is because, well, I don't wanna write these parentheses and have to square the whole thing, right? Because that's just extra writing for me and mathematicians are lazy, we like shortcuts, so we use this notation. The reason we don't use this notation is because this is unclear whether the actual theta itself is being squared or whether the whole thing is being squared, right? This is kind of unclear. So generally when we see something like this, it means the tangent theta, the entire thing is being squared. And when we see something like this, it means the angle itself is being squared. Although when I see something like this, I always write it as this with parentheses around it, tangent theta squared. That's just me personally. I like to make sure I'm crystal clear with what I'm trying to show. But yeah, just to point out, tangent squared theta equals tangent theta times itself, which means that we can what? We can square root both sides. That's the point I'm trying to make. We can square root both sides. Most people notice that, but here's the mistake that people make is they square root both sides. They square root both sides and then they say, okay, this means that tangent theta, this means that tangent theta equals square root of one over three. What's my mistake, right? I'm missing a plus or minus. You have to plus or minus if you square root both sides plus or minus, okay? 
So now I can simplify this. Let's see, I have, I can split up the square root top and bottom. So I'm plus or minus out here at front, square root of one over square root of three. I can do that, that's perfectly legal. Square root of one is just one. So then I have one over root three. This is starting to look like something I know on the unit circle, right? If I multiply top and bottom by root three, basically rationalize the denominator, then I can get root three over three, plus or minus, which is on the unit circle. So if I rewrite this whole thing, I get tangent theta equals plus or minus root three over three. So that means I can get, I, I, I'm looking for an angle that when I plug it into tangent, I get either positive root three over three or negative root three over three. So I actually will have four solutions for this theta. So theta equals, and it's gonna be every a reference angle, it's gonna be a solution from each quadrant with what kind of reference angle? Pi over six, right? Because that's the angle that gives me root three over three. So pi over six reference angle for tangent. So my solution is gonna be pi over six, five pi over six, seven pi over six, and 11 pi over six. So these will be all the solutions for this trig equation. This pi over six and the seven pi over six give me the positive root three over three, and this five pi over six over 11, and 11 pi over six give me the negative, right? But I'm including all of them since I had to plus or minus when I square rooted both sides, okay? So, all right, so last example. Again, the first thing we always wanna do is isolate the trig, but in this case, it's already done for us. We have cosine two theta equals negative one half. So really the only tricky part about this problem is this two theta in dealing with this, but we'll talk about that in just a second. So first of all, what angle can I plug into cosine and get negative one half? Well, I know that since it's negative and we're dealing with cosine, we gotta be in the second or third quadrant, right? And I know that since we have a one half here, we have a reference angle of pi over three. So in the second quadrant with a reference angle pi over three, or in the third quadrant with a reference angle pi over three. So that gives me what is my solution? Let's see. Two pi over three as well as four pi over three. Two pi over three, four pi over three. But let's think about this. Cosine of two pi over three equals negative one half cosine of four pi over three equals negative one half. So that means these aren't solutions for theta, these are solutions for two theta, right? So these are solutions for two theta. So this is what makes this two in here tricky and there's a few ways you can think about it. Graphically, if you think about the graph of cosine theta, when we have a two inside here, what we say it does is it horizontally compresses the graph of cosine. So that means there's gonna be more angles, they give me negative one half on this interval from zero to two pi since we're compressed, right? Another way to think of it and how I prefer to think of it for these kind of problems is algebraically is if I take something like this and I wanna make this two theta so I can multiply all sides of the inequality by two basically. And what I'm left with is something like this. Here, I'll write it, I should write it over here. I'm left with something like this. Zero is less than or equal to two theta is less than four pi. So I'm finding all the solutions for two theta between zero and four pi. So for something like this, two theta, I found the solutions between zero and two pi, but I need to extend all the way to four pi, because then what I'm gonna do is take all those solutions and divide them all by two to get the solutions for theta, all right? Another way you can kind of think about this is that for theta, you only have to plug in angles that are half as big as you normally would have to. So that opens up more possible solutions. And in general, when you have a number in here bigger than one, you're gonna have more solutions. And if you have a number in here less than one, you're gonna have fewer solutions. Like if you had cosine of theta over two, that would give you less solutions. Versus if you had cosine of three theta, you'd have even more than this. Your interval would stretch even more. So this is a little bit tricky. But this is the way I prefer to look at it. Write out all the solutions for two theta or whatever you have in here, write out those solutions, and then rewrite your interval and basically divide or multiply, do whatever you need to do to get to the solutions for theta. So we're gonna go ahead and extend all the way up to four pi. So basically I'm just gonna add two pi to both of these. Two pi can be re rewritten as six pi over three. So that leaves me with eight pi over three, as well as 10 pi over three. And now I'm gonna solve for theta. So let's see, I can get this out of the way. I know that all I need to do is to solve for theta is divide everything by two. So I have theta equals, 
So if I divide everything by two, then what? That's the same as like multiplying by one half. So I can think of like multiplying a two down here in all these denominators. And I'm probably gonna end up canceling stuff up here because this is gonna give me pi over three when I multiply this by one half. This is gonna get me, yeah, it's all gonna cancel, two pi over three. So I'm gonna have the same denominator because I'm canceling like uh, four over two, that gives me the two. Eight over two, that gives me the four. Hopefully this makes sense. 10 over two, that gives me the five. I just took everything in here and divided everything by two. And if you have a different way of doing it that makes more sense to you, then do it that way. But these are all my solutions for theta. So instead of having two solutions like I normally would if I just had cosine theta, I now have four solutions because my interval has expanded. All right, so this is a little bit tricky, but hopefully this helps a little bit. If you have any questions, please leave them below. Hit like if you enjoyed. Hit subscribe and stay tuned for the next video. There will be a part two and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you in the next video.